In the previous video, we talked about using simultaneous assignment in the header of a for loop. And now that we've seen how to do that, it's appropriate to talk about a couple of built-in functions that prove quite useful at times. And these are the zip and enumerate functions. In the previous video, we had a list of lists where each of the inner lists contained a student's name and that student's score. Now let's assume we again have names and scores, but we have them in the form of two separate lists. Let's create those. Let's create a names list and there's the string Jill, the string June, and the string Jane, and then a list of numeric values of grades. The scores were 89, 93, and 86. We again want to display the names and grades together as we did before and here's one approach that we could use. We could say for i in the range of the length of names and we could have put grades there instead of names. Both these lists we're assuming have the same length and then we can print names with an index of i and grades with an index of i to pair the names and grades. And hitting return twice, we see the names and the grades. And that works, and there's nothing wrong with it. But there's a built-in function called zip that allows us to write this a little more cleanly. The zip function takes as arguments iterables, and it simply groups the individual values of those iterables together in the form of tuples. And describing this in words makes it sound a bit more complicated than it actually is. Let's just show an example of the way the zip function behaves. And in order to see what it produces, we need to wrap it as an argument of the list function, sort of the way we did when we were looking at the behavior of the range function. So we can say we want to list what zip produces when it's given an argument of names and grades, those two iterables or those two lists. And what we get is that it paired the names and the grades together as tuples. So this essentially creates a list of lists, although it's really a list of tuples, but that distinction doesn't really matter to us. And now we could use this in the header of a for loop and when we do, we should not use the list function. We could say for name and grade, so singular identifiers as loop variables, in the zip of the names list and the grades list. So we provide those two lists as arguments to the zip function, and it will pair values, and those pairs will be simultaneously assigned to name and grade. And now we can just print the name and the grade. And hitting return twice, we see the names and the grades. Next, let's turn our attention to the enumerate function. So assume we want to print all the names together with a count starting from one. And there are a couple of ways we could do this. We could say for i in range the length of names and then just print i plus 1. We'll have the count start from 1 and then names with an index of i. And if we hit return twice, we see the count with each of the names. Or we could do this. We could initialize a counter outside of the loop. So say count is equal to 1. And now for name in names, we could print the count and the name and then increment this counter. And that works as well. But there's a built-in function called enumerate that allows us to implement things a bit more cleanly. And enumerate takes an iterable as its argument and it pairs the items of the iterable together with a count starting from zero. And we can illustrate this easily enough, although again, to see all the output at once, we need to put the iterable in the surrounding enumerate function. 
as the argument of the list function. So we could say list show us what enumerate returns when it has an argument of names. And what we get now are the elements from names but paired together with a counter. So we have again essentially a list of lists although it's really a list of tuples and we can use this in the header of a for loop but again forget the list function when we're using this in the header of a for loop so we could say for i and name in enumerate of names and now we simply can print i plus one because we want the count to start from one and the name and hitting return we see the count and the names and arguably that's the simplest cleanest implementation but really we'll consider any of the implementations we put up here acceptable and we'll leave it at that